Hello everyone, I am Ahmad Talha and today we are going to start a brand new series on object-oriented programming using Python. But before diving deep into OOP, we have to understand a basic concepts uh, related to classes and objects. We have to understand that what is a class and what is an object. But before even understanding this, we have to familiarize with a couple of different technologies that will help us along the way. So the very first terminology that we have to uh, understand is class itself so we can uh, just to understand that what is class we can refer uh, it as a blueprint or a design now uh, moving forward in this series i will explain that why we call this class as blueprint or design but for now let's just go with the flow right now similarly uh, we have something called object and to understand that what is an object we, we can refer uh, to it as a real world entity now this entity can be anything it can be a laptop mobile device food a piece of clothing or a human itself even now previously in procedural programming we have been using something called functions to perform certain tasks right now the same functions when written inside a class are known as methods and we use those methods to perform uh, different tasks now, uh, when we talk about objects, uh, we have two things that define those objects. The first one is called attributes and the second one is called behaviors. Now, when we talk about attributes, these attributes are called properties. Uh, we can also refer is it as uh, a data uh, that will define an object. It, it can be name of a person, it can be height of a person, it can be RAM of a laptop or a hard disk type of a laptop. And the second one is behavior. Now, be behaviors are, uh, are something we can uh, refer to as actions or work. So we define uh, our objects using attributes and based on those attributes, our objects do something. Now that function is called behavior. So let's just go ahead and use a couple of different examples to understand that what is an object. Now, even in our daily life, we use objects to perform uh, different tasks, right? For example, if I want to record a video, I'm going to need uh, a couple of things like camera or video editor at least. Now, these both things are called objects. Uh, for example, if I want to eat something, then I'm going to need uh, some utensils for it. For example, I'm going to need a plate, spoon and glass and all of these things are objects, right? Now, uh, we use these objects to perform certain tasks. We use a camera to record a video and recording a video is something that we can call a behavior. We can use a glass to drink. Now, uh, that glass will be used to store some water. So that can be an action or something uh, that is called behavior for this object. Let's build up a better understanding of an object, right? For example, here we have this a very funny looking cartoon character called Jerry from Tom and Jerry. Now, this is something that I can call an object. Now, this object have two things. The first one is attribute and the second one is behavior. Now, the attributes uh, is something that will define this object, for example, uh, we can give a uh, name to this character for example we can call it jerry and we can also define its height now we will give this data to this object using variables so we can also uh, say that these attributes are called variables now based on these variables and based on, on this data this jerry will do something for example it will laugh it will run it will jump or it will do something else now that action is called behavior and to perform that behavior to do that behavior we will use something called methods and those methods are simply uh, nothing else but functions moving forward uh, whenever we talk about objects we also talk about class but why class i mean as far as object is concerned, we have built a little bit of concept that what is object and why do we need it? But why class? So let's take another example of an object here. In this case, we have an object called laptop. For example, this laptop is made up 
by Samsung. And this is a new laptop that just had been uh, released in the market, right? Now there will be uh, millions and billions of different laptops of the same model in the market. But all of those laptops will be based on a single design. So we use a single design to create multiple objects. So just like that in a software world, we also use a design that is called a class to generate multiple objects to perform multiple tasks. So I hope by now you have a little bit of concept that what is class and what is object and why do we need class and objects. We will create uh, a structure and a design of a software and then we will create objects or instances of that class to perform several tasks. Now in the coming tutorials, it will be completely clear what I mean by creating multiple objects to perform different tasks. So just stay tuned and don't forget to see the coming tutorials. Hello everyone, welcome to this second tutorial of object oriented programming using Python. And in this video, we are going to learn that how we can create a class and methods inside of that class using Python programming language and how we can execute them in our Visual Studio code. So this is the, uh, I have created a file named uh, class.py using my Visual Studio code. This is my VS code. And here I will create a class and inside of that class I will place a method and using that method I will try to print uh, several uh, different outputs to understand the working of class and uh, functions and methods and while defining all that I will use objects to print out my answers so let's dive into this video so let's just go ahead and I want to create a class I will create a class uh, named as person and and here you can see uh, the color of the text has been changed uh, okay so uh, first of all uh, what, what i will do is just create a simple class and then i will create a simple method inside of that class uh, to see the working of uh, or to understand the syntax of class and uh, and methods and objects okay so inside of this class what i will do i'll just go ahead and i will write define and uh, i'll create uh, a simple function like we used to create in our procedural programming so i'll just go ahead and uh, let's say i will uh, write test function and when we create function we write self into it and i will just uh, explain that why we add self here uh, so let's just go ahead and print something with this is my test method in person class okay so what i'll do i'll just go ahead and create an object for this class and what i mean to say is uh, what i'll do i'll just create um, output let's say i will create a variable output and i will uh, assign it person parenthesis so right now what I did I called my class and I assigned that value to this output here so if I'll just go ahead and let's say I'll just uh, try to pr print out the type of this variable so uh, so we understand that if it has uh, become an object or not and I will execute this and here you can see uh, the type of this output it says that it is a class and it belongs to this person class so here we can see that our output has become an object of uh, this person class okay so what i'll do i'll just go ahead and comment this out because we don't need uh, it anymore uh, what what i want to do is uh, after creating this object i want uh, to let's say let's say i want to print out my this value uh, this uh, statement right here so in order to print out this, I have to call my method this. So if I'll just go ahead and I will write print test, I mean, uh, if I'll just go ahead and uh, let's say if I remove this print, uh, you can see it's giving me an error because the program actually finding it hard, the hard to understand that where this test uh, came from. I mean, it's not a global uh, function writer. It, it, it is present inside of this class. 
Okay, so uh, if we go outside of this class and we uh, call this function, it, obviously it's gonna show us uh, some error, right? So what we will do, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, let's say we will call our fun uh, our class, sorry, and we will use dot, and you can see the output has, uh, or, or the error has been, uh, removed from here because now program knows that uh, from this class we have to uh, call this uh, test function right so what, what we will do is uh, we will uh, give it uh, the value of this object we want to print out this so what I will do I'll just go ahead and uh, give it uh, to this function now you can see that uh, this is what you are giving to this function. So this is the attribute that, that you are giving to this test function inside of this class. So uh, to store this uh, object, uh, here we are uh, using an argument called self, right? So what if I'll just go ahead and I will save this file and I will uh, return this file. So you can see uh, the output of this test function has been printed out, right? So that's what our self actually does. It takes uh, our object uh, and uh, you know put it inside of this argument here so let's uh, let's just go ahead i mean uh, we we, uh, we honestly uh, will not uh, see much of this uh, statement in our coding what we are going to say is uh, it's going to be like output dot test right so what we are doing uh, we are doing is we are using an object that we just created and inside of this object you can see this object actually contains our class right so inside of this object we are calling the test function so this actually works uh, the exact same way like this right so it will give us the exact same output uh, like this statement here so you can uh, you can simply uh, think of it like uh, that it is another way of writing this statement on the line number 10. So uh, what, what, what we are doing is instead of giving this uh, object inside of parenthesis of this uh, test function, we are actually uh, giving uh, this by using this dot method, right? So what we are doing is we are just using this object to call this method. Uh, it will again use this object as an attribute for this argument. So in this self, again, this object will be stored like in the previous uh, line here we did. So if, if I'll just go ahead and if I'll save this file and if I'll uh, go ahead and run this file, you can see the output is, 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 is exactly the same, right? So what I will do, I'll just go ahead and uncomment this and I will save this file and I will clear this command prompt and I will run this program again to see if uh, both statements uh, work uh, equally or not. So here you can see the output of both of these lines is exactly the same. So either you can use this notation or you can use this notation. And obviously uh, you won't see much of this uh, form in your coding uh, or generally in Python coding. What you will see is this type of coding, right? So this is a simplest class and object and method that uh, we can create using a Python. Hello everyone, welcome back to this object oriented Python programming series using Python. And in this video, we will learn that how we can use init method inside a class to initialize the variables. So I hope you you remember that in the first video, I explained that uh, we have to define an object in order to use it in our uh, software or in our program. And uh, I explained that there are two things that will define uh, an object. The, and one of them is attributes. So uh, we call those attributes as variables. So these are uh, the variables which hold the data that later on define an object right uh, so what i will do uh, i have uh, written uh, this class and this uh, one method just like in the previous video uh, a previous example that we discussed and what i will do i'll just go ahead and i will create an object called out one and in that object i will store my class don't worry about these errors. We will just uh, look, at, take a look at them uh, after we have completed our uh, code, right? So what I want to do is I want uh, this time I want to uh, 
use attributes to define my methods right uh, so uh, let's say uh, i want to give a, a value to this class or this object uh, and i want to use that value inside this method so for that what i have to do is i have to uh, initialize a variable that will hold the value that i will enter here right uh, so i just go ahead and i will write def and double underscore in it and here you can see i have a couple of different uh, suggestions i'll just go ahead and click here and here you can see a complete method has been printed out i'll just go ahead and uh, uh, i will remove this just to keep it simple uh, oops okay and here i will define the variable that will store the value that i will give here so for example i want uh, to give 45 here okay so this means that this object that i have created it will operate on this value right and uh, based on this value it will perform whatever uh, that is written here in the body of these methods so i have uh, given 45 to this class or this uh, out one object uh, and similarly i have to provide uh, a variable to this class that will store this 45 in it before processing right uh, so for that i'll just go ahead and i will uh, use a variable here uh, that's called number right uh, so previously when we were discussing about the objects and how we can call a method uh, using an object for example if i just go ahead and write here output one dot uh, test uh, and i will write here that means this output one will be an argument to this test method inside of this person class right uh, so uh, in the previous video i told you that this out, uh, output one is actually a parameter uh, or an uh, an attribute that we give to this uh, test method and that is uh, stored inside this self uh, argument here so similarly uh, that means when we talk about methods and classes then uh, we have to use this self uh, so similarly if we uh, talk about this uh, number right here this value right here and when we define an argument inside of our uh, class uh, then we in order to store that uh, uh, that value in a variable when we initialize a variable we have to use self uh, so for that what we can do is we can create self and dot and here you can uh, write an whatever name that you uh, want to give to your variable for example i want to give number one and you will assign uh, this number to this uh, variable so this argument that you uh, use to capture this 45 you will assign that number to this self dot num1 now this variable will be used in this entire class in any uh, method that you want right so for example if i just go ahead and uh, here i write print uh, let's say uh, the number is and here i can give self dot number right uh, it's a slight difference uh, the class is sm uh, person with small p so I can just go ahead and here change it right uh, change it accordingly uh, so uh, what it will do uh, when you will call this object uh, or when you will call this test function from this object and you have given this object a value this value will be stored in this number and this object will be given to this uh, argument and the, uh, the value 45 will be stored in it and that will be supplied to this self.num1 and afterwards we will use this variable to print out our value 45 so if I'll just go ahead and uh, if I will uh, print out or execute my Python program here you can see we have uh, an error so what is this error yeah uh, we had to write this variable here so i mistakenly wrote number so again save it and run it and here you can see the output the number is 45 has been printed out okay so that means that's how this 
initialization method works uh, we use this in init method to initialize our variables so uh, it it all it works exactly uh, same like uh, constructor in other uh, programming languages like c sharp c++ and java right so you can think of it as uh, another constructor that we use in our classes uh, so remember in the first video i t uh, i i said that we use classes as a design or as a blueprint and using that design of blueprint we create multiple objects to perform different tasks so here we can uh, just go ahead and create another uh, object we can call that out two and again i will call my class and this time i will give uh, it a value of talha let's say uh, or uh, you know um, let's stick to the integers let's uh, give it 100 and here you will call your test method using your second object right uh, okay so I'll just go ahead and let's say uh, I clear out this prompt and I run this program so here you can see this object is out one printed 45 and this object printed 100 and for both of these objects we used a same design or same blueprint that is called this class so that's how classes objects and uh, methods work so that's what actually means uh, when i said that we use a single structure a single design or single blueprint to create multiple objects that will perform different tasks here we have used a very simple example by giving different integer values but in complex examples it works exactly the same way hello everyone welcome back to this object oriented programming with python series and in this video we are going to get deeper inside our classes and we will understand that what is the function of constructor and what role does self plays inside our objects we will also discuss that uh, how our objects take space in our uh, heap memory of a computer and we will also discuss that what is the ultimate thing that defines the size of our class so without further ado let's just dive into this video so before we get to any of uh, the things that i said earlier uh, what we have to understand is that how our init function actually works uh, we discussed it in the previous video and we uh, wrote a simple uh, init function inside of a class and uh, we use that function uh, in order to uh, process our other method inside of a class right but there's something that we have to discuss about init itself so for that uh, what i can do is i can simply write a simple class and i can name it as computer and inside of this class i can write my init function and i'll just simply go ahead and remove this and i can write another method and we can call it a test method and i will again give it self and here i will write print this is second method right and what uh, and what can i do is uh, i can simply go outside and i will create an object named as c1 and i will call my uh, object here so right now we have created uh, our object we have created a class and inside of our class we have created an init method and then we have created a test method right here but what we uh, but the thing that we have to discuss here is init method right so uh, i mean we all know that whatever we write in this function it it gets used uh, in other methods inside of a class right so whenever we uh, call a class this method automatically gets processed what i mean to uh, say is i can simply go ahead and i can write print this is my first class uh, I can simply remove this space and I can save this file and I can run my program again. .py. 
And here you can see uh, when I uh, ran my constructor.py and I just created an object, you can see this line has been printed out. This is my first class. So you can see uh, I didn't call any method. I didn't ask this class to do anything. So I simply called my uh, object of this class here. So when I called my object, uh, this method has been uh, processed automatically. And because in this method we had this print function, that is why this line has been printed out, right? So if I can just go ahead and I can write C1 dot and I can call my test method here and I will save my program and I can write Python constructor again and here you can see the very first thing that has been processed is init method itself. So the first line, this is my first class has been printed out and after that what we call our second method, this is a second method that has been printed out. So that means whenever we call our class, this init method gets processed automatically. Right, so this, uh, in other words, this function runs automatically. But the question is, why this init method gets processed automatically? I mean, what is the need of this? So obviously, uh, this method contains a couple of different variables, right? So let's say, uh, let's just say, uh, I mean, I had a variable here. Uh, I will not write the actual variables. I will just use a pseudocode. Uh, for example, I will use a RAM here. Let's say it's a 30, and I can say a disk here. Uh, it is, uh, let's say, 512. Now, if I want to, I mean, in this second test method, uh, I can, I want to print out those variables. So I can say, uh, the, uh, this is the property of my laptop, right? And here I can write RAM and disk. So, whatever that has been stored in these variables will be printed out here don't worry about these uh, errors here because we didn't use self that is why it's showing error but right now we're just talking about the concept that why this init method gets processed automatically so let's let's just say we we call this test function from this object and uh, suppose this method doesn't uh, gets processed itself that means we will not have any values inside of these variables and if that's so that means we will not have any values to print here and in that case our test method will give us error right so to uh, prevent that error everything that has been present in our init method is processed automatically because in the later stages all of those things that are written inside this uh, init method will be processed or will be used inside other methods of the class so that is the ultimate reason that why init methods is actually processed automatically whenever we call the object of the class okay with that being said now we will move uh, forward with uh, our uh, today's topic of the video uh, which is uh, let's just talk about the heap memory first so whenever we call our function or whenever we uh, create an object of a class this object uh, occupies some space inside the heap memory of a computer and let's just say we want to see that uh, what is the location of that uh, object so i can just simply go ahead and remove all of this and for the time being i can write pass here and right, so uh, for now uh, this is a simple class it has nothing inside it just this pass keyword and i can simply go ahead and remove this and here i have created the object of this class right so I will click, uh, I will clear this prompt and what will I do? Uh, I will use id function to, uh, to see the location of uh, this object inside of the heap memory of my laptop. So I can write print id c1. So this id function will actually give us uh, the location in the heap memory. So I can simply go ahead and, and here you can see this c1 object is saved at this place inside the heap memory of my computer so simply if i just go ahead and create another uh, object and i print the id of that object then you can see both of these objects have been saved in different location that means these two objects are two different things 
right? So if I just go ahead and I simply uh, write, let's say, uh, init method, okay. Okay, let's say uh, inside it, I will write self dot uh, disk, same variables that we used earlier, 30 and self dot RAM is equal to 512. Okay, for the time being, I just uh, don't worry about this self. I will explain that why I, I'm using this self here or what is the need of self inside of a class or inside the methods of a class, right? Uh, I mean, what role does it play and why it is so necessary that without it, our class or objects will uh, give us errors, right? Uh, so uh, don't worry about it. Uh, let's just go with the flow right now. Okay, so uh, I just used these two variables and what I can do is I can create another uh, method and I can call it, let's say, present. Right to present uh, the characteristics of my laptop, and I will again give self to it. Let's just say I will uh, write inside the body of this method print the properties of my laptops. My laptop are, and here I can write self dot ram and self dot. Uh, disk okay so uh, if I just go ahead and if I will write uh, c1 dot and inside of this object I will call present and c2 and I will again call present and if I just go ahead and save this file and clear this prompt uh, oops run this program oops this is embarrassing okay we have uh, this little error here uh, we made a little spelling mistake again clearing the prompt and run this program here you can see uh, the value or the output of both of these objects is exactly the same. The property of my laptop are uh, 5, 12, and 30. But we know if I'll just go ahead and again print the IDs of these two uh, objects, we will realize that even though the output of uh, these objects is uh, same, the location of these two objects is actually different, right? That means the, these two are different uh, objects. But right now, because we uh, gave same values to both of these objects, that's why it, they are yielding in uh, same output, right? Uh, but let's say uh, I want to change the value of my first object. So I can write, I can simply write C1 dot uh, disk because I want to change the value of this disk. Let's say I, I am giving the value of disk is 120 and I am giving the value of RAM uh, as let's say 1000 so if I, I will save this program now and if I will run this program here you can see the values of C1 object has been uh, changed or updated so now you can see that these two objects are actually two different things uh, that will be used to perform two different tasks right so uh, now let's just move ahead and see that what is the role of uh, this self Okay, so all of this, uh, I mean, that uh, these values have been stored inside of our, this init method. And this init method is actually what we call as constructor. Okay, uh, sorry, constructor, right? So that means, I mean, you can uh, say it in these words that the building blocks of entire class will be defined in this sec in this section. And that is why this section is called constructor because it will construct all of things that are uh, yet to come in other methods uh, of our computer class, right? So this is called constructor. But what is self? I mean, why are we actually using self, right? So I'll just simply go ahead and I will, let's say, remove this. Okay, so uh, what I want is I want to call my uh, this present method. So I can call my 
computer class and from this class I can call uh, present and what I can say now the, uh, I will give the value of the object that I want to work on right so I will let's say I want to work on C1 so I will give C1 this so this C1 will be saved inside this self argument right so uh, after that uh, I mean we feed this C1 to this self uh, C1 is saved in it that means it will become c1.disk and it will become c1.ram and that c1 will also be transported to this self as well right and uh, because of that uh, we had i mean for example uh, it, it became c1.disk and it became c1.ram so uh, similarly it will become c1.ram and it, and it will become c1.disk right so basically uh, this self keyword is actually used to point towards the object that we are going to work on right I mean whatever object that we are going to use that will be sol uh, solved or that means whatever object that we are going to work on uh, will be uh, stored inside of this self keyword and that keyword will be used in all the methods inside our class right so this self is actually defines that okay uh, I mean this function is identical to every object but this self tells this method that you have to work on that certain object right and we can simply just go ahead and write this into a new notation and uh, we can call that c1 present this now this means exactly same as this right it means that we are calling our class and we are uh, calling our present method inside of that class and after that we are feeding that method this object c1 and we are asking our class to work on this object right so if i'll just go ahead and if i will write use c2 dot present i can save this program and i will comment this line here And here you can see that the value of a C1 object and C2 object has been printed out. So just to summarize that this init method is a constructor that will hold all the building blocks that are going to use in all the other methods inside our computer class or any other class that we will create. And when it comes to self, self is a keyword that actually points towards the object that we are going to use inside our object or inside our class right so whatever object that we will work on it will be stored in this self and because it will be stored in this self then all these variables will refer to that object and all these variables will be uh, related to that certain object c1 now what if we want to uh, compare two different objects uh, what we will do and or how can we do it for that we can simply just go ahead and write another method let's just call it compare now because we want to compare two different objects so uh, the first one is going to be stored in self obviously and the second one uh, is will be stored in another uh, argument we can name it as second object okay so let's say i want to uh, compare these c1 and c2 uh, based on the value of this disk right so i can simply write if self dot disk is equal to second object dot disk because uh, c1 will be stored in self and c2 with whom we want to compare our c1 will be stored in second object right so we are simply saying if c1 dot disk is equal to c2 dot disk then return true else return false okay so if uh, this function will return true then what will happen is uh, we can simply uh, write another statement here we can say if c1 dot present c2 
if this exists in other words if this is true then just simply print they have same values else just print they have different values i'll just go ahead and save this file and i will simply exit this okay clear cd desktop uh, let's just go to the folder where all of this has been saved okay and here we'll simply write a command to run this program constructor dot py okay we have some error oh sorry uh, because we want to compare uh, we had to use compare method so we are simply just calling present method again here we will write compare method i will save this file and i will run this program again so here you can see it's saying that they have two different values because in c1 we have disk 120 and because we didn't change the value for c2 then c2 has the value of disk as 30. let's just say i will remove uh, these two lines that means c1 has a uh, value of disk as 30 and c2 also has a value of disk as 30. i will save this program i will clear my prompt and run this program again and here you can see it says that they have same values so that's how you can compare your objects in uh, oops using python hello everyone welcome back to this object oriented programming with python series and in this video we are going to discuss variables in oop so when we talk about variables in object oriented programming uh, there are two types of the variables that we uh, usually come across with the first type is called instance variables and the second uh, type is called class variables or we can also call them static variables in this video moving forward we will discuss both of these types and how we can use them in our uh, object oriented programming so without further ado let's just dive into this video so first of all we'll just go ahead and talk about instance variables okay so uh, as their name suggests uh, they these are the variables that belongs to some instances and uh, we also know that we call objects as instances uh, so what we can understand uh, from this is these are the type of variables that are defined in uh, inside the methods or inside the constructor of the class so these variables uh, they usually change object to object which means each object will have different values of these variables so uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, create some of these variables so we, we can understand that what we are actually talking about so first of all I'll just go ahead and I will create uh, a class and uh, we uh, we have been creating computer class so I'll just go ahead and create that one and inside it I will just go ahead and create an init function uh, in other words the, this init function is a constructor in which we define our variables let's just take an example of computer because we have uh, you know taken the class of computer so for example we have a, a computer and the computer uh, it may have uh, a certain ram and it it may have certain hard disk drive right so we can just go ahead and use these two variables like we can say ram and i can give it uh, 512 and we can create hard disk drive and so I can call it hard and I will get it give give this value of 1000 right now these variables uh, these belongs to this constructor inside this class so uh, whenever we will just go ahead and create objects of this class these variable values will change object to object so I'll just go ahead and let's see uh, I'll create a 
object i'll call it uh, computer and i uh, i will call this object c1 right okay so let's say uh, that uh, i create another object and i say this computer but what i want is i change the uh, value of this ram for this object too right so i can just go ahead and i can say ram uh, is equal to let's say 4000 let's say okay and after that what i will do i'll just go ahead and i will print out my uh, c1 dot ram let's say and i will print out c2 dot ram I'll save this program and I will uh, run this program. So here you can see uh, both of these RAMs have been printed out. The first uh, RAM of C1 object is 512 and the second RAM of C2 is 4000 because we changed it. So we can say that the values of these variables that were present in this init function, they depend uh, on objects. So they change object to object, right? So that is why we call them instance variables because they belong to instances of a class. On the other hand, when we talk about the uh, class variables or static variables, so as their name suggests, they belong to a class. So for example, uh, I'll just go ahead outside of this init function and inside this class obviously and i will create let's say a variable here and we can call it as a brand right so this brand uh, we can say tell now this variable belongs to every object that we will create of this class so what i mean to say is uh, let's say i just go ahead and uh, I write um, C1 uh, dot uh, hard C2 dot hard and sorry and I will print uh, the name of the class dot brand right and i will just go ahead and i will save this program and i will run this program so here you can see the heart of the first object and the heart of the second object has it printed out but here you can see for uh, both of these objects we just call this class and from this class we call the variable brand right so what happened actually here is uh, that the value of this brand uh, has been printed out that is common uh, between these objects. I'll just go ahead and I will uh, What I will do I will uh, print out uh, the values of uh, C1 and C2 separately and I will uh, what, what I will do I will uh, also print out the value of the brand that uh, that is a class variable uh, with both of them so I can say C1 dot uh, RAM uh, C2 dot hard and here I can say uh, computer dot brand right and here i can say uh, print c sorry uh, i had to uh, write c1 hard here and here i can say uh, c2 dot ram c2 dot hard and here i can say computer dot brand right so what i can do i can just uh, save this file and i will clear this prompt and we can run this program so here you can see uh, the ram and the hard of c1 has been printed out but the brand name is dell and same goes for uh, the c2 ram and hard has been printed out and the values are different but uh, here you can see the brand name is again dell right so this variable is actually common between these two objects because we wrote this variable outside init function and inside our class so that means this is a class variable if i just go ahead and i will write uh, something else here let's say i will write ibm so i can save this file and i will run this file and you can see the value will change for both objects 
here you, here you can see the del has been changed with IBM. So that is the difference between a static variable or a class variable and instance variable. Hello everyone, welcome back to this object oriented programming with Python series and in this video we are going to learn that what are the types of methods in object oriented programming using Python. So without further ado, let's just dive into this video. So when we talk about the types of methods in OOP, uh, there are three uh, common methods that we can think of. The first one is called instance method. The second one is called class method and the third one is called static method. Now here we have to pay attention uh, because when we talked about variables, we said that class and static variables are the same thing. But it's not the same in the case of methods. Uh, when we talk about methods, uh, class methods and static methods are two different things. So always uh, keep that in mind when we work with uh, methods. Now we have uh, subcategories or uh, subtypes of instant methods and they are called accessors and mutators. So we will go deep uh, in the types of methods and we will uh, implement each of these methods one by one and we will understand that how uh, these methods actually work uh, when it comes to uh, classes and, uh, and objects. So uh, just like every other video, we'll create a very simple class and we'll call it computer. And then inside it, we will create uh, an inner function, which is called a constructor. And inside this constructor, we will just create a couple of uh, variables. Let's say uh, we are talking about computers. Then again, we'll take a RAM and uh, uh, let's just take the values from the user uh, while calling the objects right so in that case we will have to give variables here so we can say ram uh, we can say hard and let's say uh, we also say um, like keyboard okay so we'll say the third entity is a keyboard. Okay, so for that, uh, when we will uh, call RAM, uh, we will use self.ram to store that value. And similarly, uh, for hard, we will say uh, self.hard. You can, uh, obviously you can uh, assign any variable that you want. These are just uh, uh, random names. And we can say keyboards. we assign it the value of keyboard right uh, so uh, let's say uh, I create a method and in through this method I want to uh, I want to know the characteristics of my laptop right I want to see that how how much RAM it has and how much hard it has so for that we will create a method and we'll say status and we will use self like we use every time and this time we will say uh, the properties of my lab top are and we can say self dot ram and we can say self dot hard okay so what i'll do i'll just go ahead and i will create uh, an object called c1 and i will uh, use computer parenthesis and inside this parenthesis i will give the values for these three variables that we just created so i'll say uh, my ram is uh, 512 my hard is 2000 and keyboard is yes let's say i will say yes Okay, so what I will do, I'll just go ahead and I will uh, just to test uh, if this function is working or if this method is working right or not. I'll just go ahead and we will write ram c1 dot hard and c1 dot keyboard. 
right so what we'll do we'll just go ahead and save this program and uh, we will run this program so here you can see uh, the value of RAM and the value of hard and the value of keyboard has been printed out now uh, we are talking about instance methods methods right so in the previous video we said uh, when we talked about instant variables we said that the variables that are written inside this constructor are called instance variables okay so uh, right now what we have done uh, so far is uh, first of all we are talking about instance methods right okay uh, if we reflect back to the previous video uh, about types of variables in that video we discussed about instance variables and we said that every variable that we create inside this constructor is called instance variable right so every method that we that will use those instance variables will be called instance method like right now uh, in our status method we are using self.ram and self.hard and these variables are called instant variables right so uh, uh, because of this this status method is uh, called instance method and you can also recognize instance methods by this self keyword every method that will have self keyword in it will be called instance methods right so first of all now we know that what are instance methods but we also have to understand that what are accesses and what are mutators right and these are the uh, subtypes of instance methods so accesses as its uh, name suggests these are the method that access things that get things right so for example if i'll just go ahead and i will write uh, let's say uh, define get ramp let's say I create this variable and I will uh, use this self and I will write print I'll say the RAM of my laptop is uh, and I will say self dot RAM right now in that case uh, when I will just go ahead and I will call my uh, object and I will from that object I will call get RAM and I will save this file and I will run this program again you can see the RAM of C1 has been printed out right so uh, what this method actually did is accessed the value of this RAM of this C1 object right and now you can also see this self has been used in this method so in a way it is uh, still a, an instance method but at the same time it's getting a value and it's it's getting a value of ram so that is why we can also call it a getter or we can also call it a, an accessor right and uh, similarly we also have mutators so mutation mutator comes from the word mutation and mutation means change so the methods that can change the value of a certain variable uh, of uh, or, or we should say uh, a method that can change the value of an instance variable is called uh, a mutator right so what we can do is we can just uh, go ahead and we can say set run uh, we can also call these methods as setters so again we will use this self and because now we have to set a value then uh, that that's why we have to get another value and for that uh, we have to uh, write uh, an argument here right so here we can say uh, or we can say that uh, self dot ram uh, is equal to this value and then we can say print the ram of my left top right and here we can say self dot ram and when we will call this method uh, we will say c1 dot set ram now here we will give the value because we added an argument here so for example i will just go ahead and i will write 4000 here and i will save this file and we'll clear this prompt and here i will run my program and here you can see uh, before the value of my RAM was uh, 512 right 
but then I what I did I called my set RAM and through this method I changed the value of my RAM from 512 to 4000 so because it set a new value that that's why we can call this method as a setter uh, or we can also call it as a mutator and you can see here we are again using this self keyword and that's why it's still an instance method right so that's about it about uh, instance methods uh, and we also discussed that what are accessors and what are mutators now let's just uh, move forward toward class methods right so in the previous video we talked about class variables right so those uh, were the variables that were written outside this constructor and inside this class right about here. I mean, in short, the methods that will use instance variables will be called instance methods and the uh, methods that will use the class variables will be called class methods. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and I will create a class variable here. Let's say I will create a variable brand just like in the previous video and I will uh, use this as del right so what what we can do here is we can create uh, a method that will use this uh, class variable so what we can write is we can say uh, define and we can say uh, brand this is the uh, name of the method that we will create and now here instead of using self we will write CLS uh, CLS represents class right so it makes or it turns this method from instance method to class method so what we'll do we'll just go ahead and let's say I will write here uh, the brand of my laptop is and here we can say uh, brand right uh, and just like we use self.ram we here we have to use cls.ram okay and what we will do we'll just go here and I will say a c1 dot uh, brand and I will call this and I will save this file and I will run this program okay so here we have this uh, error here so uh, I mean uh, what we have to do is we have to uh, feed this method or class and just like uh, I mean in the previous video we understood this mutation right uh, we called our class and from that class we, we called our method and uh, in this method we gave our object right so what uh, this error is actually telling us is to do that for our class method but we don't want to do, do that we don't want to feed our class a between these parentheses we want to write it just uh, just like this right so there's a way that we can use to avoid uh, that previous notation right what we can do is we can just go here and use this at the rate and here you can tell your program that whatever uh, is uh, under uh, this uh, notation or keyword that you're going to write uh, whatever uh, there is it it is a class method so you can just write here class method All right so you can save this program and hopefully when you run it uh, okay so uh, this is this is the error that we this is the mistake that we are making uh, this brand is actually a class method but we are using our object to call it what we want to do is we want to write computer here we want to write a class to call this uh, class method now if we just save this program and run it hopefully it will work okay uh, so uh, yeah uh, here this is the mistake I mean uh, we actually uh, use the same uh, keyword for our method and same word for our variable uh, so we have to differentiate this because Python is getting confused at uh, which one he has to it has to consider right so we'll just change this uh, method name uh, from brand to branding 
and we'll just change this again and we will save it and we will run it and here you can see your uh, class variable has been printed out which is del right so here uh, goes our class method as well now we have a third type of the method and which is called static method so just to summarize whatever we have uh, discussed until now is uh, the first type of the method is instance method and these are the methods that used uh, instance variables then we had class methods and these are the methods that used class variables now we have static methods now in the case of static methods we don't use any kind of variables uh, we do not use instance variables we do not use class variables we do not use any kind of variables these are the type of uh, these are these are the type of methods that give you a static output let's say you have to print out something again and again in your program and uh, instead of just writing your print function and the statement again and again you create a single method and whenever you want that statement uh, you just call that function here so uh, in that case you use static uh, methods so let's just go ahead and create a static method i'll just write here and i will say Mm, let's say I will say info. So here I can write print the laptop condition is good. Right? So this what we have created here is called a static method. Right? And just like class method, you also have to define uh, your uh, static method here. So you will write static method, right? This will create uh, your uh, info method uh, into static method. Now, what uh, whenever you want to uh, call your uh, method, you, you can just simply call it using your object. You can say, c1 dot info and I will save this program and I will run this program and you, you can see that the laptop condition is good has been printed out and hey here what you have to focus on is that uh, we neither we are using self keyword nor we're using CLC class keyword right so in the case of static uh, methods we do not use any kind of keywords here because we are not using any kind of variables here right we are not using instance variables or we are not using class variables that's why these parentheses always stay empty so that's about it uh, regarding types of methods in oop programming with python series and in this video we are going to learn about inner classes and first we will just dive right into the code and we will uh, learn that how we can create inner classes inside uh, uh, inside a parent uh, class and then after that we'll discuss that why do we need uh, inner classes in the first place so uh, first of all uh, let's just go ahead and create a class quickly so we'll just uh, in the previous videos, we were talking about computers, so let's just create a computer class. And inside this class, I will just create an, a constructor, which is called uh, init method. And inside this method, I will take uh, two arguments. So let's say, just like in the previous videos, the first argument will be space, and the second argument will be uh, RAM. So I'll just go ahead and create uh, my uh, uh, variables inside this method or this certain class and I will say uh, let's say self.disk is equal to space so it will show the space uh, of the hard disk of your computer and in the next variable I will just go ahead and save it as a RAM so your RAM will be stored in this so, um, what I'll do is just go ahead and simply create a function called show, and this function will just print out uh, the value of my disk and the value of RAM. 
uh, and after that, I'll just go outside this uh, class, and here I will create an object. I will call it S1, let's say, and I will call my class, and this is my object. And from this object, I will call my function show. But before uh, running this program, I'll just go ahead and give uh, variables uh, or the values or the arguments to my object. So, for example, I'll say that S1 object will have uh, a, disk, a disk space of uh, 512 and a RAM of uh, 16 GB or most, uh, 16 GB. Right, so I'll just go ahead and save this program and I will uh, um, run this program using my Python 3. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu, so I'm writing Python 3 here, but if you're uh, doing this on Windows, you can just write simple Python here. So I'll just go ahead and run this program, and here you can see uh, 15, uh, sorry, 512 and 16 has been printed out, uh, because that's uh, these are the values of the disk and RAM that we uh, Gave uh, to our class, right? So uh, up till this point, this is just a simple class, right? I mean, uh, it has uh, uh, it has nothing special. It's just like, it's just same like the previous videos, right? So let's say that uh, I want to create another class inside my uh, outer class, uh, which is called computer. Let's say I want to create a class called specs. And in this uh, in in this class, what I want to uh, store is the brand and the CPU of the computers, right? So for that, I'll just go ahead and simply do that again. Uh, my init constructor for this class, and I'll just go here and I will write self dot brand. And here, let's say I give it a brand name uh, Dell. And similarly, I'll just uh, give it a CPU of, uh, let's say, i5. And I will uh, write another method, and let's just call it show again. And we will print out the value of brand and the value of CPU. Right, so what we want is uh, uh, that I mean, we have created this specs class inside of our uh, outer class, which is called computer. Let me just go ahead and uh, reduce this window so we can see all of our code together. Uh, so this class is, is inside this outer class, right? So whenever we will create an object of this class, if we want to uh, find the specs of that object, we can just call this spec the specs class from that object. So simply what we have to do is uh, uh, in this object, we have to call our class that we saved inside this, right? So what I can uh, say is, uh, let's say we create another object and in this object, we will call our first object and from that we will call our specs, right? And this is this is called our, uh, I mean, inner class. We have created a, a a new object uh, with this inner class. So in S1, we have this computer. So basically, we are asking uh, our code, uh, go inside this outer class computer. And then inside of that class, find another ob object, which is called specs, and which is related to this uh, inner class that we have created. So I'll simply just go ahead and I will write S2 uh, show. So now we have this uh, second object uh, of this inner class. And from this second object, we are just calling the show function, which is this function. So let's just go ahead and save this. And let's uh, try to run this program and see if it runs. So here you can see uh, the first line is the show method from your first object, which was uh, in your uh, outer class, right? So it just printed out the disk space and RAM, which is 5, 12, and 16. But the second show is related to your S2 second object, right? And this second object is related to, to this inner class specs. So that's why when you call show inside of, uh, I mean, 
from this object, then this method uh, is being called. And here you can see the brand and the CPU has been, uh, I would say, uh, printed out, right? And you, you can see Dell and i5 has been printed out. So what if we just uh, I mean want to use uh, other methods inside this in, in the class like setters or accessors, right? So let's just go ahead and create a setter. So I'll just call this uh, setter and I will give it self and with self, I will give it a new value that we want to set to the variable, right? So let's just say I want to change the brand name, right? So I will just call uh, self.brand and I will give it to the new value this. And after that, I, what I uh, want to do is I just want to uh, call my show function again, right? So uh, here, what I can do is I can simply call S2, uh, and from this uh, I mean object, which is related to your inner class, I want to call my setter, and in this setter, I want to give a new value to my brand. So let's say I want to change my brand from Dell to HP. So I'll just go ahead and I will save this program and I will run this program. And here you can see uh, in the first line, this is just, I mean, this S1.show, uh, which is giving us the value of disk and RAM. The second line gives us the uh, values from the inner class. Uh, so it, it's printing out the brand and a CPU. But the third line, here we are setting the new value of the brand in the inner class right so uh, one uh, so i mean what uh, was dell earlier now it's it it has been changed from dell to hp and we can see that uh, here in the third line we have hp and i5 so that's how inner classes actually work and that's how you can uh, create inner class inside of an outer class so basically we i mean uh, one might say that uh, whatever we have done so far right here it can also be done by i mean creating a separate class so of course that's that's uh, that's completely correct you can uh, do all this by creating an uh, outer class i mean a separate class but sometimes when you're writing a code uh, what you want i mean you uh, you will have uh, tasks that uh, only uh, wants to be repeated inside a certain class for example i mean if uh, if you, we, we are talking about these specs, whenever, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about computers, I only need specs uh, in that time. Uh, if I'm talking about students, if I'm talking about, uh, let's say, uh, mobile phones, then I don't need these, these specs, right? So instead of making a new separate file for uh, or new separate class for these specs, what we, uh, what we do is we just create a simple, uh, uh, inner class inside this computer because we know that we only will use this class when we're talking about computers so that's why we are i mean uh, generally we use uh, inner classes inside of a parent class so uh, i hope you have learned uh, by now that why how we can create inner classes inside of our parent class right so uh yeah that, that's it for this video Hello everyone, welcome back to this object oriented programming with Python series and in this video we are going to learn about inheritance, then what is inheritance and how we can create it in Python programming. So the word inheritance itself uh, describes everything. I mean, just like in real life, if we talk about father son relationship, so it's it's exactly like that. I mean, for example, this is my laptop on which I'm recording this video, right? So uh, this is my laptop. But if my father has a laptop, then that laptop is also mine. I mean, if my father has a piece of land, then that land is also mine. So this is exactly uh, the concept that we can also implement in our coding. So what I mean to say is, for example, this is a class uh, and let's pre call it brand. This is a brand class. And I will just simply create uh, a class in it called uh, company sorry a method in it not the class it, it will be called self and here uh, i can print del right so this is this is my uh, one class uh, let's uh, uh, create another uh, method and we can call it specs 
and we can say self and here we can print uh, let's say i5 512 uh, GB of hard and 16 GB of RAM right so uh, what I, uh, I mean uh, if I just go ahead and simply create a, uh, an, an object I can call it uh, b1 because we have brand uh, we can create an object here and if we just go ahead and call uh, our object now in this object you can see the list of the methods that we have in this object like we have company and we have specs this is a company and this is called specs right so if we just save it and if we just uh, run this program you can see the brand or the company name of uh, uh, of my laptop has been printed out right so dell is printed here so what if i just uh, after some time i'm creating an app and i create another class let's say i, I will call it computer now what I want to do is I want to uh, give all these methods to this computer class. So the one way is just copy here and uh, go here and paste it. But um, in real life, we we will be dealing with uh, hundreds of lines of code. And this is not an optimal way and it is not desired or liked in a professional manner. So how we can uh, bring all these methods to this computer class? We can do this by inheritance. What we can uh, do is just go ahead and write brand in the parentheses. Just by doing this, we are giving this entire class or all the methods in this class to this new class, which is called computer. And if I just go ahead and create uh, a new method, let's say I will call it uh, clock. It will it will show us the clock speed of the laptop let's say so uh, i will write anything here let's say three four five six seven eight nine right so if i just go here and i will create an object for uh, this class i can write computer now if i will call my object c1 and i will put dot here you can see this clock is present in the list, but we also have two other methods. We have this company and this specs method also here, right? So that means this computer object or C1 object is inheriting all the methods that were present in this brand class. I will simply go here and I will uh, uh, change this, these spellings and I will come here and here you can see all the methods uh, from the computer class and the brand class are listed here so let's say uh, let's say i mean i call this uh, sorry i call this clock method and i will save this program and i will run this program so you can see this clock speed is printed out because simply we call uh, our c1 uh, or clock from a c1 right i'll just go ahead and comment this out but what if i i will comment this out also what if i want to call my company method from c1 let's call it and from c1 i will call my company and you can see this company method clearly belongs to this brand class but i'm calling it from c1 and c1 is the object of computer class i will just save this program and i will run this program and you can see the Dell has been printed out, right? That means this C1 has this company method. And how, I mean, this company method is written inside this brand, then how C1 has it? With the help of inheritance. Now this is called single level inheritance. You can call it uh, single level inheritance. And we can call it a uh, super class or we can call it parent class. And you can call this subclass or child class. Right? 
Now, why do we call it single level inheritance? Because this computer class is only inheriting all the methods from this uh, brand class, right? So this is a simply, this is a single level inheritance. But what if I create another class? Let's call it technology. Now, this technology class should have uh, information about computers, right? Let's say. So what we do is uh, inside of this parenthesis, we write computer. Now, if you see closely, this technology class is inheriting everything that is inside this computer. So inside this computer, we have this method and all the methods of brand. So at first we are inheriting brand in computer class. And after that, everything that is present inside this computer, including clock plus methods of brand, we are inheriting all of that inside of this technology class. We are, we are creating different levels of inheritance. So this is called multi-level inheritance. Let's just go ahead and create a uh, method here. Let's simply call it test method, right? And we can print here, I am third class, right? And I will simply go ahead and create an object for it. It will be technology. Now, if I, if I just go ahead and write T1 dot, you can see all the methods in this list. I mean, you have the company and specs uh, from the brand. This clock is from computer class. And this test is from this technology class that we just created. So if I just go ahead and let's say click on this clock and I will save this program and I will uh, run this program, you can see the clock speed has been printed out. Right, and this clock was present inside this computer, right? So without writing all the methods of computer inside technology, we simply, what we did is we inherited this computer class to this technology and this way we are using its method inside technology class. What if I just go ahead and simply call company here? And I will just go ahead and write. And here you can see this Dell has it printed out because this company was inherited from brand to this technology uh, through computer right so this is called multi-level inherit uh, uh, yes multi-level inheritance but we also have another type of inheritance we can call it multiple inheritance now what is that uh, if you, I mean, see closely, uh, what we are doing is first we are inheriting it into this and then we are in inheriting it into this. So this is called multi-level inheritance. But if we talk about multiple inheritance, then uh, what we can do is simply I will remove this. Now we have two separate uh, classes. The one is brand and the second is computer. And what we can do is we can simply call both of them here. Just by doing that, we are uh, inheriting all these classes into this technology, right? If you just go ahead and simply remove it and put dot here, you can still see all the methods of the previous classes as well. But the, the method uh, with which we have inherited previous classes is called multiple inheritance. Because now we are not inheriting something from another class. Uh, like previous we are just simply calling the separate classes into another class so this is called multiple inheritance right so there's a difference between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance so i hope you have learned uh, a lot from this video uh, about inheritance and i hope this was this video was informative for you so uh, that's it for this video hello everyone uh, welcome back uh, to this object oriented programming with python series and in this video we are going to learn about uh, method resolution order and uh, 
another theme that uh, we can say is called constructor and inheritance. We will see that how this constructor in, in inheritance actually works. So this is uh, the basic structure that we followed in the previous video. Uh, these are the three classes. This is uh, a brand class and this is a computer class and these are two separate classes. And in technology class, we are uh, inheriting both of these classes. Uh, and we'll see that how instructor actually works uh, in 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 the inheritance so what i will do first of all i'll just go ahead and create a constructor here i can write in it self uh sorry self and here i can print this is tech in it just to show that which uh instructor will uh, will work when we call uh, any class. So the same, I'll just go ahead and copy this constructor from here and I will write it here. But this time, obviously I will write computer in it. And the same will go for the brand. But this time, obviously I will write it brand. So first of all, what we can do is we can simply uh, I'll uh, remove this inheritance and we can simply create the objects and we can see that how these constructor, constructors actually work. So for brand, I will create V1 and here I have a, a brand and I can save this file and I will run this program. And you can see, you can see the uh, init or the constructor of the brand class has it printed out right and same will go for computer class and same will go for uh, technology class right uh, we can just simply run this program and here you can see for b1 brand in it for c1 computer in it and for t1 tech tech in it right so that's how uh, i mean inherit uh, i mean uh, this in it work uh, in in simple classes right so for example uh, we have uh, uh, let's say these two separate classes but in the th third class uh, i want to inherit everything that is present in computer and then uh, everything that is present in uh, brand right so now what we, we will see that uh, what actually happens if i will run this program here you can see, I will simply just uh, remove this and I will simply call my T1 object from technology and I will run this program again. And here you can see uh, the tech uh, has been printed out, right? Uh, I mean, uh, obviously uh, we are calling the object from technology, so it will go into technology class. And if this class has any, you know, init function in it then obviously it, it is going to call that init function right but what if uh, we don't have any init inside it what we have is um, just a function test self and inside this test we have print uh, this is test now our technology method doesn't have any kind of constructor in it I will save this program and now we will see that what actually happens, uh, which init function uh, or T1 object will call. I will just run this program and here you can see we have this computer in it. So that means this computer init uh, method has been uh, or the constructor has been called by this T1 object. Right. So that's how uh, constructors actually work in, in inheritance. But here's a question that why, I mean, why did it go to this computer class? Uh, why uh, it only called the constructor of computer? Why not uh, call the constructor of brand? So here comes a concept of method resolution order, or we can also call it MRO. So whenever we have this inheritance structure, uh, when you will inheritance your classes to your another class, then the class that is present on the left hand side will be called 
first right so that's how uh, that that is the reason that why computer in it has been printed out right so uh, now uh, this was uh, when we have uh, no constructor in our uh, this subclass which is called technology right but what if we have a constructor inside of our uh, this class i mean this technology class what if we have constructor in it and what will happen then then which constructor will be called first and what if we call if we want to call uh, the constructor of uh, the superclass then how we can call that so i'll just save this program and i will run it and here you can see because this time we have init in technology then that is why this init has been printed out right but what if we want to uh, i mean call uh, uh, the constructor of uh, either of these uh, superclasses, right? Now we have two superclasses, right? I mean, we have a brand superclass and then we have a computer superclass. And we are inheriting both of these classes into this subclass technology. What if, what if I want to uh, call a constructor from either of these, uh, these classes? So all I have to do is inside of this constructor, I will call my super. So super is a keyword that uh, actually tells us that we are going to inherit the constructor from the super class. So I will just call this super class and uh, I will uh, enter point. And here you can see we have a couple of different uh, attributes here. And here you can see we have in it. Just go here and this. Now, if you just save this program, now here you have to see that first your technologies constructor has been uh, called and because in that constructor we have uh, the constructor of a super class then that super uh, constructor has also been called right so this is the output of the computer's constructor and this is the output of your uh, technologies constructor but again why did it go to computer class why not brand then again, uh, we have the concept of method resolution order here, MRO, that whenever you will have multiple classes, multiple super classes, then the one that is on the most left hand side will be called first, right? So left to right is the, uh, is the way that we have to remember. So what if we, uh, I mean, we want to call the constructor of brand and what we have to do, you can simply just go here and you can call uh, uh, your brand here right so probably you won't don't have to write this in it but let's just try right so uh, it's just giving us uh, two outputs because we are calling in it by this and again in it by this so you can just simply go ahead and remove this and save it and here you go now your uh, brand uh, constructor is being called and your tag instructor is being called. So that is how constructors work in the inheritance. And uh, now we also know that what is method resolution order or MRO. So that is it for this video. I hope that you have learned a lot from this video. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to this object oriented programming with Python series and in this video we are going to discuss another very important topic of OOP uh, which is called polymorphism. So the polymorphism uh, from the words itself, uh, if we break this word then poly means many and morphism uh, indicates different forms. So it means that we will have the objects that will uh, have many forms. Uh, we will create objects that will have different forms, different uh, shapes or names, uh, but they will uh, behave exactly the same way. So there are four different methods uh, with which we can perform this polymorphism. And one of them is called duck typing, which is uh, we are going to discuss today. <clears throat> so uh, here uh, duck means obviously uh, duck and typing means its type. Uh, so uh, here's a very popular saying that if a bird walks like a duck, uh, talks like a duck, quacks like a duck, swims like a duck, then it's a duck. 
So well, for example, if I'll just create a class, let's say it's a class one, and then I will create a class two. So uh, if both of these classes uh, will have methods that will behave exactly the same way, then I can say that this class is exactly like this class or this class is exactly like this class. So even though these classes or the objects will have different forms, I mean, it will call it will be called one or it will it will be called two. Uh, but if we change their names, uh, then uh, even after that, these classes will work exactly uh, the same way. So what I'm trying to say is I'll just go ahead and uh, I will write a very simple code and we will try to understand that what is polymorphism and what is the duct typing actually. So let's say I will create a laptop class because you we were talking about computers and laptops in all uh, in all of our previous videos. So let's create a method in it called stacks. And in this method, uh, let's say I put the specifications of uh, i5, 5 graph GB, and 16 GB. So i5 is a core a processor CPU, and 5 uh, 12 GB is the hard disk, and 16 GB is uh, the RAM, right? So what I will do, I'll just go ahead and I will create another class, but this time I will create a class called mobile. But what I will do in this different class, I will create the same uh, method called specs and uh, I will write self in it. And this time I will uh, change my uh, my specifications. Let's say a mobile have a Snapdragon CPU. It has 128 GB of space and 8 GB of RAM. Now what I will do, I'll just go ahead and create a, a polymorph uh, named class. And in this class, I will create a method called test. And in this test method, I will say self. But uh, additionally, I will also take an object that on which we will work. Now what I will do in the body of this uh, method, I will write object dot uh, specs. Now this specs can either be uh, this specs or it can be this specs right based on the objects that we will uh, give to it so what i will do uh, i will just uh, quickly uh, go ahead and create the objects for all all three uh, classes i will say l1 is for laptop and m1 is for mobile and p1 is equal to polymorph right so what I will do, I will simply just uh, go ahead and uh, I will call my P1. And from this P1, I will call my test method. And in this test method, I have to give an object, remember? So I will just simply go ahead and uh, give this uh, method M1 here. So I will just go ahead and run this program. I will say this. Oh, uh, I just made a little mistake here. I had to put equals there. So uh, I'll just quickly clear this terminal and I will run this program. So here you can see because I gave M1 object to this test method, that's why the specifications of mobile devices have has been printed out. Here you can see. But what if I just go ahead and uh, let's say I will change it to L1. But this time I have the specifications of a laptop, right? So that's what polymorphism is. Uh, if you uh, take a look quickly, all I did was uh, changing M1 uh, to L1. And this program did not return any kind of error. And what was the reason? The reason was that both of these classes, both of these objects had this specs method in them. So in, in, in a sense, this class mobile because it has same method as this laptop class this mobile class is behaving exactly like this laptop class right so i will say that if this uh, class quacks like laptop class then it can also be behaved or it, it has the same type as a laptop class so that's what polymorphism is and that, that that's what duct typing is 
I hope this video was uh, in, informative for you and you learned that what is duct typing and how we can perform that in our Python uh, inside our object oriented programming. In the next videos, we will learn that what is operator overloading and method overloading and method, method overriding. Hello everyone, welcome to this object oriented programming with Python series and we are discussing polymorphism and we are discussing the four different methods that we can or, or that are associated with this poly polymorphism. Uh, today we will discuss what is operator overloading and how we can use it in Python. We will uh, start right from very basic examples and then uh, we'll take it uh, to the objects and classes. So uh, suppose that we have two variables. The first one is A and the second one is B. And in A, uh, let's say I, I will just go ahead and uh, store a value of 5 and in B, I will store the value of 10. Now this 5 at this 10, they are integers, right? And because of them, the type of this A and B, they, this is also integer. Now what happens when I will just go ahead and I will print out A plus B? Now first of all, we have to understand that what is this expression actually. Here A and B, both of them are operands and this plus here is called operator. And whenever uh, we will use this, uh, these operators in Python, these operators uh, actually mean something. And that meaning has been defined uh, at the backend by the creator of this uh, Python programming, right? So in this case, we have uh, uh, the, the data type of this A as integer and the data type of B as integer as well. And this expression shows that we are adding two integers. When we talk about integers or strings or float or something like that, we are actually talking about classes because these are classes. If you just go ahead and write int here, and after that you just press dot, and you can see these are all the methods that are present inside this uh, int class, right? For example, we have this float, we have floor, flags, uh, gt is greater than, uh, and exactly i mean uh, similarly we have other uh, sort of, sorts of uh, uh, methods like round and r power and etc so whenever uh, we we talk about integers and then we use plus here then this plus actually means that okay uh, go to this uh, class integer and from this class call add method right so this plus operator is defined uh, to call this add method from this integer class when both of these variables are integers, right? Uh, and after this, uh, calling this method, all we have to do is give it two variables, A and B. I will just simply go ahead and comment this line and I will save this program and I will run this program here. And the answer of A plus B is 15. Now, if I just go ahead and comment uh, this out uh, and uncomment this, and I will just print the result of this, we will see that the output of this line is exactly the same as the above line. Here you can see it also yields 15. So that means uh, whenever we use integers and then uh, we use plus operator uh, in between them, then what we actually are doing is from that integer class, we are calling add function. Similarly, if we just go ahead and uh, write minus here, then we will uh, we will not call call add we will actually call sub function and the answer will be exactly the same now all of this has been defined by the creator of python at the back end right so uh, let's say if i just go ahead and change the type of uh, my variable i will first it was integers and let's say i convert it into strings now I will just go ahead and write add here, but this time because we have both of the variables as strings, of course we will not go to the class string, we will go to the class str, right? Now uh, when we will use plus inside it, and let's say I will, I will just comment this line out and I will uncomment this and I will save this program and I will run this. Hey, hey you can see this time this plus didn't mean that it had to add all of these uh, all of these variables instead this plus meant to concatenate them right 
and how did we uh, know that we have to concatenate because we are dealing with the strings this time right so instead of adding it just concatenated 5 and 10 and if we just uncomment this and comment this and run this program here you can see again 5 10 has been printed out and the both of the variables have been concatenated to each other instead of being added so i mean it has same methods but because this time we are using string then the meaning of this plus has been changed now this meaning has been uh, defined at the back end right to all the classes that uh, that are built in classes like integers and strings and float and whatnot right but as soon as uh, let's say i mean uh, i hope until now it's it's clear but what if let's say i create my uh, my own class i mean this is not uh, a built-in class this this is something uh, i have created let's say it's a student class and in this class i will create a constructor and in this constructor i want two variables m1 and m2 and uh, i will say self dot m1 is equal to m1 and self dot m2 is equal to m2 right so what i want is uh, i want to create the object s1 from the student and i want to take two numbers and i want to add it let's say i have created uh, this object here and then I, I have created another object here let's say and this time i would say 50 plus uh, 30 that's it now what if i want to add both of these i will say s one plus s2 should be equal to s3 i will just save this program and i will run this now here you can see uh, we have an error which is called type error uh, but what is the error we have unsupported operand types for plus student and student that means we we don't know uh, or our program doesn't know that what i mean what is the type of these uh, s1 and s2 and what is the pur purpose of this class because this time this class is not built in we have to define the meaning of this plus right so what if i just go ahead and write a, a method here i would say def add just like in integer and string and this time i will uh, use two variables first one i can call self and let's call the other one as other now what i can do is uh, I, I can say m1 is equal to self dot m1 plus uh, self dot m2 and uh, m2 is equal to self dot uh, we we use self other dot m1 plus other dot m2 what if uh, and, and after that, let's just uh, take S3 and M1 plus M2. And after that, just return your S3. Right? So now, if I just go ahead and I will try to print my S3, uh, we'll see that uh, what happens. I'll just run this program. Okay, you can see this time it actually added all these values right and this time it didn't give us any kind of uh, uh, i would say error uh, saying that this operand or operator is unsupported because this time we actually what we did is we defined uh, our plus uh, inside of our class that okay whenever we will call this plus operator our method will do all of this so we have defined our variable. So this is called operator overloading. You can define it as, uh, I mean, uh, as you like. I mean, instead of, let's say, uh, adding them, you, you could write, subtract them, for example, right? You could say this. And if we just save this program, and now whenever you will call plus, so this time, instead of adding everything, it will subtract everything. So in your class, you have defined your operator. So this is called operator overloading, right? I'll just simply go ahead and uh, add or replace it, replace all the minus with the plus again. 
And this time what I want to do is I want to create another method. Uh, let's say if I just comment this out, uh, what if I want to uh, compare both of my objects? I can say uh, S1 is greater than S2. If that's true, then print uh, S1, let's say. Otherwise, else, just go ahead and print uh, S2. Okay, if I just go ahead and I will run this program, and you can see again it gave me a type error it said that this operator is not supported because i did not define this uh, in my student class if you were talking about integers or floats or string and whatnot uh, in that case because it, at the back end the creator has defined this operator this greater than operator uh, for integers or float uh, then in that case it will not give any kind of error i mean just like here but in our case, we, we have created a new class and we we haven't defined this operator here. That's why it's giving us uh, this error. So what I will do, I'll just quickly go ahead and create another method called uh, GT. So GT means greater than. And here what I will do, I will simply call two variables. Uh, we first we can call self and this other one we can just simply call other. Now what I will do, uh, uh, I mean, we have to define this operator here because uh, when uh, when we, we so uh, so when we used this operator for integer or for float or something, then at the back end the creator of Python has defined the meaning of this uh, integer or, or this operator. But in our case, we are creating a new class here. So in order for this operator to work in for our class. Uh, we have to define the meaning of it inside our class, right? So what I can do is uh, we can create a variable called m1 and here you can say self dot m1 plus self uh, dot m2 and here you can create another variable called self dot uh, sorry other dot uh, m1 plus other dot m2 right and after that sorry here we can here we can say n2 so after that we will use uh, if operator we can say if uh, n1 is greater than n2 then uh, uh, return true otherwise just go ahead and return false so if uh, n1 is greater than n2 then it will be true and as a result s1 will be printed out i'll just simply go ahead and reduce these spaces and in case uh, the result will be false then s2 will be printed out let's just simply save this program and now if we will just return this program here you can see this time this uh, operator did not return any kind of error because now we have defined it but the question is i mean uh, this operator didn't work for s1 and s2 because these were objects uh, f. but why this operator uh, worked here because here n1 and n2 they are the numbers they are the values that are stored in the objects and here they are simply the objects but when we define this operator for the values of these objects now as a result this operator will also work for these objects right so uh, here we can see uh, 50 plus 13 is uh, 63 sorry and 45 plus 6 is uh, 51 and because s2 is greater that means s2 will be printed out and here you can see s2 has it printed out so that's how you can define your operators for your custom classes and this is called operator overloading and that is related to polymorphism so i hope you have learned a lot from this video and i hope uh, that uh, in the next videos uh, you will get familiar with method overloading and method overriding that are also related to polymorphism. Goodbye.
Hello everyone, welcome back to this uh, object-oriented programming with Python series and we are discussing polymorphism. Today we will discuss method overloading. So first of all, we will uh, discuss that what is method overloading and then we can uh, discuss that if we can apply it in Python or not. So uh, in simple words, for example, I have a class student in that class if i want to create a method let's say i will create a progress method i will say self and i can write print in it uh, this is first uh, method and after that i want to create another method such that this method also contains the same name as the previous one even though your attributes are different uh, and your body is different, this is a second method. Even though that's the case, uh, both of these uh, methods will have same name. So this is called method overloading. But in Python, we cannot create two methods with same name, even though uh, giving them a different amount of attributes or different bodies. We, can, we, we just can't create uh, two methods with same name. So that's why in Python, we don't have method overloading. Uh, so for example, if I want to create two methods, so uh, in me method overloading, uh, let's say uh, my first method will have uh, two variables and the second method will have three variables, right? So that, 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 that's what method overloading is, right? Uh, but as we don't have a uh, method overloading in Python, but we still have a couple of different uh, tricks that we can use to, uh, you know, get around this. For example, in student class, I want to create a method called total marks, that's it. Now in this total marks, I will say self, and I will, uh, I will have, uh, I will have two uh, or three uh, attributes here. I will say math, uh, physics and chemistry, for example. Now, what I want to do is I want to add all three of these uh, subjects and give uh, a total. Let's say I will have total is equal to uh, math plus physics plus chemistry. And as a result, what I want to do is uh, I want to return uh, the value of the total. Right. So uh, until now, it's pretty simple. We have created a class. We have created a method. It, it contains three attributes. And as a result, it adds all of them and give us the value. What I want to do is I want to create uh, an object and we can call it student. And S1 from S1, I will call total marks. And in this uh, method, I will give uh, my numbers let's say maths is 45 physics is 50 and chemistry is 40 that's it and i will print this out i'll run this program you can see all three numbers have been added but what if instead of three uh, arguments i give only two arguments if I save this program and I will run this program, hey, you can see it's it's telling me that you are uh, missing one uh, positional argument uh, for chemistry. Because in my method, I was accepting three attributes or three arguments, but here I am giving only two. So if we had method overloading, then we could create uh, another method called total marks. And in that method, we could only take two variables, right? But uh, since we don't have method overloading in Python, so we have to come up with uh, a different technique to do that. So uh, we can, uh, there are no multiple ways that we can do it. We can use uh, the steric uh, based multiple attribute uh, system, or we could also give uh, initial values such as none to all the these, all, th all of these uh, three uh, attributes. So, uh, if we just write none, so initially all these uh, three uh, attributes have the value of none. So in this case, if I if I only uh, give two uh, values to this method, if I save this program and I run it, 
uh, okay sorry we had to create the body uh, if i just go ahead and write here uh, if uh, math is not equal to none and physics sorry physics is not equal to none that means we have values for them and uh, chemistry is not equals to none then do this then add all of them else if we can create another method uh, we can simply just copy it and we can say else if math is not none and physics is not none in this case we are giving two values right so uh, what you want to do is total is equal to math plus physics and the third condition is lf math is not none that means you are giving only one value and in this case total will be equals to math because we don't have anything else uh, to add in this math and and the result we will return our total if i just simply save this program and run this program here here you can see because i gave two numbers only 45 plus 50 uh, our method has added them and the result is 95 and we don't uh, even though uh, our method takes three arguments uh, we gave only two and even after that uh, our program ran uh, pretty uh, nice right without any error i can again run this program and you can see uh, we have the answer of 95 so that's uh, i mean uh, something that we can utilize to perform method overloading in python but uh, the truth is uh, when 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 it comes to python we don't have method overloading uh, it is present in java in c sharp or other programming languages but it doesn't exist in python programming in the next video, we will discuss that what is a method overriding. It's pretty simple. Uh, so good luck for the next video. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this object-oriented programming with Python series, and we are discussing polymorphism. And today we are uh, going to discuss uh, the last method to uh, perform uh, polymorphism and that is called method overriding now what is method overriding first of all we have to understand that what uh, what does it mean so for example uh, just like it's it, uh, its name we have method uh, which is a function inside a class and we then we have overriding so basically what we are doing is we are overriding methods with uh, another method so just like uh, method overloading here we we will also have two methods with same name but obviously just like we meant just like we discussed in our previous uh, video uh, it, it it's not possible in python to have uh, two methods with same name inside a single class uh, so uh, here we will discuss uh, the concept of inheritance and then we will uh, try to perform method overriding in it so for example i have a simple class i can uh, say laptop because since the beginning we are talking about laptops and computers uh, and I want to create a function called the specs in it for example now in this specs I will call self and here I will print let's say i5 512gb just like earlier and then I will have 16gb in it now here what i can do is i can create another class and i can call it uh, let's say computer class and for the time being i will write nothing in it uh, or let's say i will create a method and in this method i can say cpu or i can say gpu i can say self and here i will write print i can say nvidia gpu Right. So, uh, for I mean, if I just go ahead and create an object for laptop, I can say laptop. So, uh, I can simply call l1 dot specs in it, and I can run my program, and it will run uh, completely fine. Right. It will print out all the specifications of my laptop. But what if I just go ahead and instead of uh, 
first of all, I will just create C1 for computer. And what if I just go ahead and replace this L1 with C1? And if I save this program and I will run this program, right? So it's telling me that you don't have any uh, attribute called specs in your computer class. I mean, you are trying to call this specs method from your C1 object and C1 object is from computer and inside computer, you don't have any specs. So here uh, we will use the concept of inheritance. Let's say I will have a laptop written inside it. Now, if I just save this and run this program, here you can see now it didn't show me any error. Instead, it gave me all the specifications of my laptop because now I inherited my laptop to my computer. That means everything that my laptop had now is present in computer. So this is something that we have uh, discussed already. But what we want to discuss now is what is method overriding? So here you have to uh, pay attention to my words and you have to listen to my uh, carefully here. When we called uh, our object computer and from this object computer we called specs, first of all, what your code does is it looks for this specs in your computer class. But because we don't have any kind of specs method in this computer class, then it goes to its parent class and looks there. And it finds there and then it prints out all the output or all the body that has been written inside that specs. But what if uh, I keep everything like this and I just add a method called specs here and it will be self and here I will write this specs is in computer class. What happens now? What if I run this program? Uh, now what will happen? And you can see instead of going uh, to the specs of your laptop class, this time your C1 printed out its own specs because now it has its own specs method. So uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, when you run this program, your objects, first of all, looks inside it for the method that you have called. Before we didn't have this specs method in computer class, that's why it went to the uh, parent class and look, look there. But now it has its own specs method. So that means now it doesn't have to go to its parent class. That's why it will ignore the laptop specs method and it will print out or execute the specs of computer class. So this is called method overriding. And it's very important co concept that you have to understand because it's uh, quite extensively pursued in software uh, industry or in interviews and stuff. So that's it uh, about method overriding and uh, its uh, relevance or its association with polymorphism. I hope you have learned a lot from this series and uh, I hope uh, that uh, it was beneficial for you.